Hi, this is Vanessa. Welcome back. And here is the news for today. Philippines journalist Maria Reza denies tax evasion charges. Maria Reza, a journalist who runs a Philippine news website known for its tough scrutiny of President Rodrigo Duterte, pleaded not guilty to task evasion charges in a case she has described as a form of harassment. Reza, who is chief executive of news site Rapler, was convicted of libel and sentenced to up to six years in prison, a ruling widely seen as a blow to democratic freedoms under Duterte's increasingly popular authoritarianism. These charges are politically motivated. It is meant to harass, to intimidate. It is meant to be a war of attrition to try to make us afraid to keep reporting. And the best response to it is to keep reporting. You know, this is it. This is one of those times where I hope that the judges, the men and women who will touch the cases, will be guided by the spirit of the law and that they realize how much is in their hands how this is history, and their names will be part of history. The question is, are they going to be on the right side or the wrong side of history? Ressa's latest court appearance is over accusations Rapler falsified task returns by omitting the proceeds of sale of depository receipts to foreign investors to revoke its silence. The securities regulator alleged it was a scheme by Rapler to allow foreigners to illegally own shares in a domestic media firm. Ressa is facing several government lawsuits that have caused international concern about harassment of journalists in the Philippines, a country long seen as a standard barrier for press freedom in Asia. The Philippines targets 10 million coronavirus tests by 2021. Health Minister says the Philippines is planning to testing nearly a 10 of the 109 million population by 2021. Health Secretary Francisco Duque says in a televised meeting with the President Rodrigo Duterte that they intended to increase the daily testing capacity from 20,000 up to 23,000 to 32,000 up to 40,000 to meet the target. The country has so far tested 1.1 million people. Because we are tracing a lot of people, we need them to get tested immediately. And Secretary Dizon said we will achieve 10 million tests by 2021. As of today, our total tested individuals reached up to 1,120,000, Mr. President. Duterte also threatened citizens to offer arrest for violating restrictions that aim to contain the spread of the coronavirus. We do not have any qualms in uh, arresting people. It might under ordinary times, that's what I'm saying about to say kanina, is that a simple violation of not wearing a mask seems to be trivial. And social distancing, all of these things. But during times of uh, health uh, issues, pandemonium, you, you can because it's, it can be a serious crime. Government officials say health workers and police will visit homes of patients or no symptoms and escort them to isolation centers, raising concerns on possible human rights violations by the authorities. The Philippines is grappling with overburdened health facility and community transmission, with cases nearly quadrupling to 68,898, and that's nearly doubling to 1,835, since the government relaxed strict quarantine measures to breathe life into the economy. Over hundreds of Thailand youth activists burn portraits of Prime Minister Prayut during protest. A group of young activists gather near the Government House of Thailand in Bangkok where they burn portraits of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha and his deputy in a show of protest against the regime. want to burn the bad things in Thailand, <laughs> like uh, our Prime Minister, which is not, which is not from the democrat, democracy or the election. I calling the Prime Minister to go out of the government and I want to... Like, uh, I want to change the law, which is the constitution, the constitution law, which which is unreliable and unfair for the for our democracy. 
The group is also calling for the government deemed as coming from an unfair election to step down and to amend Thailand's 20th constitution that replaced the one scrapped after 2014 coup by generals who promised stability in Southeast Asia's second biggest economy. The protest is one of a series of gatherings that occur in Bangkok and other provinces throughout the past week under the same free youth movement review after the country report on a local transmission of coronavirus infections. Thailand is to extend a state of emergency, but the National Security Council says the decree will be used only to contain virus outbreaks and not rallies. So far, there have been no arrests at the protest. Hundreds of young Thailand protesters gather near Bangkok to demand the government's resignation and the dissolution of parliament. A network of student groups joined forces under the Free Youth Movement in Patum Thani province near the capital city, sitting a litany of complaints against the year-old civilian government of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, the former army chief who ousted an elected government six years ago. <laughs> We are here to call for a new constitution because the current constitution doesn't support our rights and freedom. It was inherited from the military coup in 2014. It bars people from adequate rights and freedom and weakens the other political parties. <laughs> In the past six years, the economy has worsened, and we're about to graduate, but we don't know how we will be able to make a living. If we don't come out today, there won't even be a future for us. I want to call for a true democracy in Thailand. I want this government to give up power because they have been taking advantages from people. They don't take care of the people. They cheated the elections. They have no justice. Public opposition to Prayut has been growing in recent months. Since last year's election, a court has dissolved the second largest opposition party, giving his ruling coalition firmer control in parliament. Talented youths from different groups also plan to hold gatherings in Bangkok and several other provinces throughout the week and into the weekend, defying a coronavirus ban on mass gathering. China says United States attempt to drive wedge between Myanmar won't succeed. Related to the United States statements in the U.S. Embassy in Yangon, all Chinese actions in the South China Sea and Hong Kong, where Beijing are imposed tough new national security laws. Beijing says the U.S. first published comment attacking and condemning China defending its Myanmar embassy's responses as clarifications and rebuttals, as tensions mount between the superpowers. In response, the Chinese embassy in Myanmar accused the U.S. of outrageously smearing the country and driving a wedge with the Southeast Asian neighbors over the contested South China Sea and Hong Kong. I think the fact is that it was the U.S. that first published comment and attacking and condemning China. Chinese embassy in Myanmar made clarifications and rebuttals regarding that. The relevant position by the U.S. made far-fetched comparisons and confusions right and wrong. China and Myanmar are geographically close and also enjoy close relations. The friendly cooperation between China and Myanmar can stand the test of time. The attack by the U.S. to smear China and its deliberate attempt to drive a wedge between China and Myanmar will not succeed. China will deepen cooperation with Myanmar, together build a community with a shared future and write a new chapter of friendship between the two countries. Myanmar has increasingly become a battleground for influence between the two countries, since relations between the government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi and the West became strained over its treatment to the Rohingya Muslim minority. Hundreds of people displaced and 30 deaths caused of the flood flows in Indonesia. Authorities say flash floods and landslides killed 30 people on the Indonesia island of Sulawesi and left hundreds displaced. Sampai hari ini pukul 17.05 yaitu berjumlah 30 orang. As of now, 5 past 5 p.m., we have found 30 people dead. Uh, untuk saat sekarang ini masih ada uh, yang dicari di karena masih ada data-data uh, dari warga atau masih Rescuers continue to search for victims amongst mud and debris in North Luwu district amid reports of missing. 
The flash floods struck the North Sulu district of South Sulawesi province after heavy rain caused three nearby rivers to burst. More than 4,000 residents were affected. Our house has been damaged and is no longer suitable for living. Seven of our family members were victims. Indonesia frequently suffers from floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season, though the situation is often made worse by the cutting down of forests. The talent dropped charges against Red Bull Air in the deadly heat and run. Thailand Deputy Police Spokesman Kisana Patana Chereong tell reporters at the news conference says criminal charges in Thailand have been dropped against the heir to the Red Bull Energy Drink Fortune who accuses in 2012 hit and run that killed a police officer. And police received the final verdict from the Attorney General's office to not prosecute the Red Bull heir. Variot boss Yovidia faced charges of speeding, hit and run, and reckless driving causing death. In June, we have received a final order from the Attorney General to not prosecute Varayut on charges of reckless driving and causing the death of others, according to the Penal Code Section 291. After this final order to not continue with the prosecution, the next step is to withdraw the arrest warrants accordingly and coordinate with the Interpol to withdraw the wanted notices as well. Oh, if, if uh, we have to withdraw um, all the um, e arrest warrants and, and, and also the um, Interpol arrest warrants as well, and, and, and after that he 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 be free. Yeah, I feel I, I really feel upset about this case uh, previously, but the fact is that we. Um, when you review the case, yeah, you've got to um, carefully review all evidence, uh, witness statement whatsoever. Uh, and we feel really, really sad about this case. But, but the fact is that it's not, it's not the first case, but we decided to drop the case like this. If you uh, consider what happened in the past, um, there are two ways of deciding this. Um, you can uh, pursue the case or you're going to drop the case. Uh, so it's, it's quite normal. We strictly follow um, the, 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 the protocol here. Variot was accused of crashing his black Ferrari into a policeman on a motorcycle in Bangkok and fleeing the scene, dragging the officer's body for several dozen meters. Thailand authorities finally issue an arrest warrant for Variot five years after the accident, after he missed eight legal summons. Varayut is a grandson of the late Chaleo Yovidia, creator of the Kratin Dang or Red Bull energy drink. According to the Forbes magazine, Chaleo 88 was listed as the third richest person in Thailand at the time of his death in 2012 with an estimated net worth of $5 billion. Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation reaffirms a recovery priorities amid COVID-19 pandemic. Economists participating in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperations reaffirms the prioritization of economic recovery from the COVID-19 outbreak following a virtual meeting chaired by Malaysia on Saturday. Malaysian Minister of International Trade and Industry, Muhammad Azmin Ali, who chaired the meeting, says that the meeting aims to respond to the challenges posed by COVID-19 and recover the economy. He also hoped to enact Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation post-2020 vision by the end of the year. The participating economists call for joint efforts and close cooperation to conquer the pandemic. Meanwhile, they also advocate a free, open, fair, non-discriminatory, transparent, and predictable trade and investment environment to drive economic recovery in Asia-Pacific region. EPIC is a regional economic forum established in 1989 to leverage the growing interindependence of the Asia-Pacific. EPIC's 21 members aim to create greater prosperity for the people of the region by promoting balance, inclusive, sustainable, innovative, and secure growth by accelerating regional economic integration. With a combined population of 3 billion, the 21 Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation economies account for some 60% of the world's total gross domestic product and nearly half of the world trade. Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation is working on areas such as trade and investment, liberalization, business facilitation, human security and economic and technical cooperation, aiming to achieve sustainable growth and prosperity in the Asia-Pacific region. The Thailand LGBT call for democracy and the gender equality. Hundreds of Thailand lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender activists on July 25 evening gathered in near Bangkok's Democracy Monument to emphasize their call for gender equality and condemned Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha's government. As demonstrations joined by youth sprung across the country throughout the past week, 
to call for the government to resign and dissolve the parliament want to add their concerns about the lack of gender equality and rights for sex workers. The activists were seen dancing as they held a giant rainbow flag. We're here today mainly to call for democracy. Once we have democracy, equal rights will follow. We, as the diverse gender group, face a lack of equality in society. So that's why we are out here today focusing our calls on gender equality and same-sex marriage. The government being ignoring us. They refuse to listen to the people. They don't care about the people. These are not what a good government ought to do. Some protesters say they will continue together until their calls have been met. I'm out here today not just to call for a democracy or just because I hate authoritarianism and want the parliament to be dissolved. Democracy is about equal rights for all, including the access to education, rights for disabled, rights for the ethnicity and gender rights as well. Yaya as an activist says the government was not transparent. Even if they get rid of them, their ideology will never die. We all know that the government power is not transparent. We all know it. Even if they don't step down from power today, we want to let them know that we won't go anywhere. Even if they get rid of us, our ideology will never die. We will pass this on to the next generation. There have been small protests seeking to drive Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocho from office in at least six provinces, while internal party squabbles have led to six cabinet members resigning. About 2,500 people rallied against Prayut in one of the biggest demonstrations since the 2014 coup, during which they revealed negative references to the powerful monarchy. The Singapore Zoo unveiled a pair of twin straight rough lemurs after coronavirus restrictions. The yet-to-be-named twins who were born on February 22 are the first burst of the critical endangered species in the zoo since their 11-year-old father Bosco was born. Their mother, 8-year-old Minnie, came to Singapore in 2016 from Yokohama Zoo in Japan. Singapore Wildlife Reserves says in a statement that the Raskolyura species only bred once a year, making reproduction notoriously difficult. Video from the Singapore Wildlife Reserves show the twin lemurs being examined by veterinarians. Microchips are inserted into their skin for identification purposes. The twins start to greet visitors. The zoo was closed due to the coronavirus lockdown. And that's all for today. We will see you again.